this video, I want to discuss the notion of communication competence, what that means, and how we can achieve communication competence, why it's important to us as communicators. So the first thing we want to do is define communication competence and talk about what it is. So we're on the same page here. Communication competence simply means engaging in communication with others that is both effective and appropriate within a given context. Okay. And so what do we mean by that? Let's break those things down then. Again, the comp the components of competence here involve, first of all, being able to communicate with effectiveness. And we need to understand, first of all, that effectiveness uh, comes in degrees. It's a matter of degrees. It's not a matter of you're either effective or not effective. There are varying degrees. Sometimes we're extremely effective and move all the way down on that proficiency level to the, to the end of that continuum. Other times we're in the middle where maybe we're somewhat effective but not entirely effective. Or it could just be that we fumble the whole thing and we're completely deficient. We could fall anywhere on that continuum. So effectiveness really is a matter of degrees. It's not a one or the other. It's not a binary situation. It's, it's a situation of, of degrees. There. We could fall anywhere. Uh, effectiveness also means being we, not me, oriented. Thinking about the other people. It doesn't matter if, if it's effective in your mind if it's not effective for other people. So we really need to consider whether or not what we're doing is effective for in a we context instead of just a me context. In addition to effectiveness, we need to consider the appropriateness of our communication. And by that, we mean, are we following the rules for that particular situation, that particular context, that particular culture, that particular relationship? And all of these things have, all of these situations have rules, right? So, and, and not only that, but we have different rules that govern the, the use of language and govern the use of communication in general, things like phonetic rules and syntactic rules and uh, pragmatic rules, all those types of things. But we need to consider whether or not we are uh, communicating appropriately following the rules for that particular uh, communication scenario. Uh, if not, then we are violating those rules. And what are the consequences of violating those rules? Well, I mean, it could be a loss of respect. It could be, you know, it could be something more drastic. It could be, you know, depending on the situation. But, uh, but the, you know, when we're not following the rules and communicating appropriately, then we are violating those rules. And we need to recognize that. Finally, we also need to recognize that, that these rules change. They change from situation to situation. They change from relationship to relationship. They change from culture to culture. They also change over time. The rules of communication and what's appropriate or not do not stay the same. They're not, you know, they're not status. They're not static. So they they change over time, um, in a in a particular culture in a particular situation. Uh, so those rules change, and what's appropriate then will change as well uh, along with that. Finally, we need to understand that there are intercultural challenges that come along here as well. Uh, and not just intercultural challenges like we're thinking about communicating with people from different countries, um, but communicating with people who have different expectations of what is and what is not appropriate. Again, appropriateness is, is, is measured by these rules, and depending on the culture you're in, it doesn't have to be another country. You could be in, in another part of the United States and have um, different expectations about what's appropriate and what's not. And you could go across the street and have different expectations of what's appropriate and what's not. Um, so we need to understand these that these intercultural differences. They they uh, they mean challenges for us as communicators in terms of identifying and then following, hopefully, what is and what is not appropriate. So um, there are challenges along those lines as well. But in, in all, we're looking at, you know, am I communicating effectively and am I com communicating appropriately? And in order to do that, we need to know what we can do to then achieve competence within that. So let's take a look at some of the elements that are involved in achieving competence and becoming a more effective and appropriate communicator. The first is knowledge. We have to have a knowledge of what's expected, what is effective, and what is appropriate in that situation. We have to, to have a, a baseline knowledge of, of appropriate and effective communication. So we're not constantly putting our foot in our mouth, right, so to speak, to use that expression. Uh, but we need to, to have some basic knowledge. We need to study communication, as you're doing here in, in reviewing this video and, and whatever other materials you're looking at here. And we need to establish some knowledge about how to do something. Right? Then we need to practice those skills. You know, knowledge of something doesn't do us any good if we can't put those that knowledge into practice. So we need to then develop skills. We do that by practicing, um, just like we would anything else. If you want to get good at anything, you practice it, right? And you practice it well. The same is true of communication. We need to practice applying that knowledge in different situations, not only gathering that knowledge, but then being able to use that knowledge in various situations as we move uh, through life and, and move through different situations, different contexts. 
Uh, we need sensitivity. We need sensitivity to uh, be able to determine what is appropriate and what's not appropriate in that situation. We need the sensitivity to make adjustments. We need to be able to, to read a situation, read a room, read a person in a way that says, okay, what I'm doing is not working, or what I'm doing is working, and let me do more of it, or whatever. We need to be sensitive to things so that we can make adjustments and so that we can recognize, again, what is what seeming to be appropriate and what is not, what rules there are. We need to, to pick up on these things. So we need to have the sensitivity to be able to do that. We need to have a commitment, just like to anything. If you want to become better at anything, you need to be committed to that. There's going to be a lot of, of frustration in becoming a more competent communicator. There are going to be a lot of situations where you fail and a lot of situations where you don't understand what you're doing wrong. And so you have to have a commitment to work through that, to say, regardless of how difficult this is, I want to do this better. And so you need to have the commitment to to engaging in that and continuing to see it through them. Communication competence involves strict ethics as well. We need to, to communicate ethically uh, in general, but uh, but if we're going to become a more competent communicator, then we need to value the idea of, of ethics and communication. And by that we mean things like honesty, respect, fairness, choice, responsibility, all of those things factor into um, ethics in communication. And so uh, so we need to honor those things uh, and, and work on those things in ourselves. Uh, so we need to be ethic, ethical communicators by displaying honesty and respect and fairness and offering choice to others in the way that they communicate and, and what they communicate. And then we need to take responsibility for our own uh, decision, decisions and, and as a communicator and what we say and how we behave. And we also need to recognize that in others as well. We need to, we should expect that from others. But uh, so, in order to achieve communication competence, these are the the things we need. These are these are the uh, kind of the levers we need to pull. We need to continue to to grow our knowledge, to put that knowledge into use in the form of skills. We need to have sensitivity to what's going on around us and make those those adjustments. We need to be committed to to honing this craft and really sticking with it. And then we need to display ethics as a communicator as well. You put all that in a blender and eventually you come up with communication competence. However, I would point out too that these are always things that we're going to have growing. It's not like you ever get to a point where you say, oh yeah, now I'm a competent communicator. I can stop doing all this. This is a continual. Then another way that this commitment comes in, this is a continuous process. It really never ends and uh, because communication never stops changing. Right. So we need to, to be able to change and adapt with it. So um, so in order to achieve competence, we need to pursue these things and continue to pursue these things throughout our lifetime as well. When we put all this together, ideally we're going to become more competent communicators. We're going to have the ability to uh, develop and maintain these relationships more effectively and, and be able to move amongst many circles. And, and be comfortable communicating in any of those. So that's the idea here, to become a more competent communicator so that we can you know, fully adapt and utilize our communication skills regardless of where we're at and who we're communicating with. If you have any questions about communication competence or anything else, feel free to, to email me. I'm always happy to respond to emails and discuss any of this with you further. In the meantime, get out there and really start honing these, these skills for communication competence. I think you find when you when you make it your focus, when you when you when you really put your heart and your effort into it, you'll be amazed not only at the difference that you see in yourself, but that others see in you as well in terms of your overall communication competence.